What's up, guys? Coming to you today with another superhero chat. Brought to you by not our sponsors. Aquafina? Pepsi. <laughs> I'll find it eventually. He, he'd have gotten <laughs> Mountain Dew, but they only had died in the machine. So. But not a sponsor. Not a sponsor. We just... I'd have gotten Coke, but they didn't have Coke. Uh, not that it looked like you'd want to drink. It was pink. I'll Coke. show you when we go downstairs. Okay. Look, don't get upset with me. I remembered Pepsi. I remembered water. And I'm like... I imagine he wants a soda since you asked for, and Pepsi's my favorite, so. <laughs> but it's not a sponsor, so it doesn't even matter. <laughs> Anyways. So, we want to talk to you about some continuity issues with DC. I guess, I don't know if we have any for Marvel. Yeah, Marvel's not as big on continuity. <laughs> it's just DC. <laughs> DC tries, um, but I don't know. I think... I'm sure there are, but they're less noticeable than, than DC. Anyways, so who's our first subject of debate? Hawkman. Hawkman. Uh, One of my faves. I like Hawkman. Oh, He's great. Carter Hall. I mean, you can't go wrong with a big dude with wings. <laughs> and a He's, mace. Or a sword. Smashes people with a mace. Right. Like, you just... You, it's Even uh, Hawk Girl is awesome, too. Yes, yes. Made so, I think, by the Justice League cartoon. Absolutely. She uh, really hit her stride. There in uh, Robinson's um, run on uh, the Justice Society in the early 2000s, which sort of coincided. So. Anyway, so one of the problems is you've got so many origins, and they all conflict. No, see, that's not the problem. The problem is... They have this character who was introduced in the 40s, and then they wanted to reintroduce him later on, but they wanted to add, like, all these extra sci-fi elements. So they introduce a new guy, Qatar. It's still Carter, but I'm just, like, saying it phonetically so you understand there's a difference between Carter Hall and Qatar Hall. Hall. Yeah, from Thanagar. (laughs) <laughs> um, and eventually, they're like, oh, but they're sort of connected, but not exactly. Because one dude was like this Egyptologist. The other dude is a space, you know, like a space police guy. And then they're like, but they're connected because they both have the nth metal that uh, powers their heart, you know, gives them the ability of flight and other powers as well. And then you had the crisis. And so after that... Uh, everything's okay for about five minutes, and then DC's like, oh, we're going to give um, – oh, I can't remember dude's name. Anyway, we're going to give this guy Hawk World, and he's going to introduce us to the idea of Hawkman again after the crisis. Only problem, DC had already used Hawkman in a couple of Superman stories. <laughs> so now you have to explain that, and they couldn't figure out a, a, an easy way to do it. And then they found a way. It was a pretend Hawkman, uh, sort of building off the other guy's reputation. Uh, He becomes a villain. Even that gets to be too complicated for for DC to work with. And so in the um, Zero Hour uh, miniseries, um, they just basically smush all the Hawkman characters into one character uh, who had a great look with the black pants. Um, he had the wings that grew out of his back. He still had the mace and everything. Um, visually, that's my favorite Hawkman. Uh, so, um, and we were okay with that. Then they canceled his series and they threw him into some sort of side dimension and never to be heard from again. And then Grant Morrison started writing the Justice League. It was great times. He wanted to include Hawkman. DC said, well, he's kind of a mess continuity-wise. Why don't you create yourself a new character? So Grant Morrison creates this angel character named... um, Oh, it's his name. Zariel. That's what it is. Zariel. And uh, he's like, it's pretty much Hawkman, but it's this angel character. And we were like, okay, he's not Hawkman, but we'll take him because we really want a big dude with wings. Um... Like, <laughs> like he had a, a visually interesting look, um, which is what's so impressive about the Hawkman character. Well, even in uh, the Justice League cartoon. Well, know, that's what I was going to get to. You have, like, three different Carter Halls. No, you, or you two, have two. Two, um, so I was thinking of someone else. 
because um, she goes to e uh, car a hot girl goes to Egypt um, and to the tomb to find out about herself and finds Hawkman mm -hmm. and uh, there we get the uh, the re uh, the reincarnation story right which was Jeff Carter Johns Hall. which was Jeff Johns and that's what I was about to say so in the Justice Society card, uh, comic book um, Jeff Johns uh, introduced the idea that all of them are the same character they just keep uh, get re reincarnated so they die and then they come back in this um, like the spirit of Hawkman lives on or something and um, but then like and that was a serviceable solution until they're like but we want to have one for this team and one for this team and one for space and this and that and the other and then uh, as much as I love Jim Starlin and all that he has contributed to comics he created Thanos by the way Thanos um, and a number of other excellent characters. <sighs> I don't know why DC ever let him touch Hawkman. Because Hawkman was in bad shape as it was. And that only made it more confusing. Because he was trying to rejuvenate the Silver Age Hawkman. Which sort of pooped all over what Jeff Johns had done. <laughs> as far as distinguishing them all being of the same um, yeah. uh, being or something well, I thought, like that. Uh... And then, of course, they had the analog in the Justice League cartoon, which is the other Hawkman that he referenced in the three-part story that ended the original Justice League series before you get to Justice League. I wonder. Right. So suddenly we have another in, – in, in a cartoon, you have two different Hawkmans. So, uh, well, like, the what, problem with, well, the problem with that is DC wasn't going to let them do Hawkman, and so the, the folks who did – the show were like, well, we'll just make him um, Rotalic, and just uh, so that's an anagram of Carter Hall in the Thanagarian language. Yeah, Qatar Hall. <laughs> they have the newest one, which is really great series. I enjoy, and they kind of incorporate all the Carter Halls, right, and all the Hawkmans. And yeah, they basically expand the reincarnation to all of space and time. So. Um, that's not going to lead to any conclusion <laughs> at all. So like, oh, well, you know, there's a Carter Hall of uh, Krypton and there's a Carter Hall of uh, um, all these different worlds. And and so I thought it was cool, but, um, you know, they haven't. Re I feel like they're just like, this is what it is. We're moving on. <laughs> that's probably the and best thing might, you can do. That might be the best, best thing for the character. The As a big fan of Hawkman. That might be the best way to go. So, um, I you read, really screwed it up, DC. I read the Death of Hawkman uh, um, uh, series, and that was really great. Six issues, and it was the last time we saw him before this re uh, rebirth. Hmm. And uh, he was on Rand, and uh, ran, ran, and um, he's into Iron Fist, so that's why yeah. I'm confused. Uh, I, I was close. I was yeah, close. yeah, you know, you're really close. Um, and uh, that was a really interesting because what's his name was uh, with him. Going, Adam Strange. Adam Strange is going back and forth with him. And I really enjoyed that series. Um, but uh, we see him getting like brutalized in, in this massive war. I mean, Hawkman um, is such an interesting character because you could do the mythology stuff like with Egypt. You can do the space stuff like he's talking about. You can do the comic book superhero stuff, and he, you know, he's yeah. just a really great character that, if done well, should sell. I think you know, so. Um, he's not Superman level strength. He's not Batman level ingenuity. He's somewhere in between, and it creates this dynamic that, you know, ought to be played up in such a way that you're like, wow, this dude is. Yeah. He's out of this world, but he's down to earth too. Yeah, and they can incorporate some of the different things. Like they could have him go back to Thanagar and become a space cop as the Egyptian archaeologist. And, you know, that'd be really cool. Right. A uh, space cop be... that's also an archaeologist in a certain time. Right. It's kind of like uh, uh, Daniel from SG1. Right, so, so. He, he'd get to explore Thanagar and the ruins thereof and it, it dive into their mythology. And if there yeah, isn't so. a whole lot of mythology on Thanagar, hey, now you get to create one. Because it would make sense like, for uh, the guy who's being reincarnated to go back to his former stomping, know, ground. stomping grounds that you know he vaguely remembers 
and uh, trying to find more about who he is. So, I mean, it makes sense. And, and then but, you, because of the, the mythology stuff uh, on Earth, you, you get connections to Black Adam, um, which immediately connects you to Captain Marvel and that whole uh, family of titles. Um, being in space, you get connected to Adam Strange, um, the yeah, Legion of the Green characters, Lanterns. the Green Lanterns, the Dark Stars. Yeah. It, like, it should write itself. Going He's to Earth, he has the um, Justice, Justice League, League, Justice Society. I mean, this dude could really just be like the Damage series and just cross over with everybody. That's true. DC, bring back the Justice Society. <laughs> That'd, be awesome. holding them hostage. That'd be awesome. I mean, they've got to they've got to bring them in there, or they'll lose the copyright. So eventually, right, right. Or they could just have somebody shout out to the Justice Society, <laughs> and they're like, "Oh, we used it in a story." I like to see Alan Scott show back up, which will lead into the next one, the Green Lanterns. Oh, I love I love Green Lanterns. They're um, Green Lanterns always been one of my favorite uh, series um, and heroes and. Um, I think I remember Green Lantern before I remember anything else. Um, like I knew who Batman was. That's but, funny because Hawkman is for me. Like, but I liked the Green the Green Lanterns, and uh, you know I don't remember much of it as a kid, but I just remember liking the Green Lanterns. And then I ended up on this phase with Cyclops, and and then went to um, Green Arrow and yeah. Robin. So, but um, I, I always like sounds them. like a really interesting <laughs> team of superheroes. And the more that I. <laughs> The more, I read it. The more that I, uh, my lady have to buy Marvels and assignments. I'm okay with that. Although Marvel's not using them, so maybe DC could make a new age of hero that's basically Cyclops. There you go. Uh, <laughs> um, but uh, so Cyclops, they, so the, uh, the lamest superhero <laughs> ever. <laughs> oh man. Um, Sorry, Caesar race. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> um. Anyways, they uh. So they had Alan Scott, and he um. You know, had his limitations. I think it was wood. Wood. And uh, the problem was he created his own uh, ring uh, from out of a meteor. Yeah, the star and, mark. And there wasn't like a Green Lantern core. He was the Green Lantern. Well, there was a core. He was just on Earth and unaware of the core because the core had been around for a while. So the core showed up before he did. No, no, no. Technically, the core showed up years later. Right. But I'm just saying. Well, I'm talking about wise. when you were reading Alan right, right, Scott. Right. There Alan was, Scott there was in the no, 40s, there was no such there thing was as no the Green Lantern, Lantern Corps. Corps. Right. It didn't show up until Hal Jordan That's came right. around. That's right, yeah. So they wanted to, to reboot everybody, so we got a new Flash, a new Green Lantern. They didn't do Batman, Superman, thankfully. but They didn't have to. Right. Um, um, but they were rebooting those guys. and so. But, I mean, they, they kind of did in the sense that Batman of Earth 2 ended up marrying uh, Catwoman, and they had... Uh, Huntress is a daughter, and then there was the Batman of our universe, because in that universe, uh, Robin grew up and joined the Justice Society, and yeah. uh, Superman married Lois Lane in the 70s, and that uh, – DC cared about continuity at one point, yeah. and so they – I they, think they still do. They just always do something that messes it up without realizing it. That's right. But, looking um, at you, Infinite Crisis. Looking at you, <laughs> Flashpoint. Looking at you, New 52. <laughs> looking at you, Rebirth and Convergence uh, and whatever Doomsday Clock is leading to. <laughs> but, yeah, if it ever leads anyway. Um, but, but then they brought Hal Jordan and the Green Lantern Corps. But then they're like, wait a minute. Like, if there's a Green Lantern Corps, why? And Hal Jordan is the first Lantern of Earth. And... What about Alan Scott? <laughs> and they had the same problem with uh, Barry Allen. With uh, um, so they created the the multi right, uh, which multi works which works. Like so, if you have Alan Scott in his own Earth that never had a Green Lantern core, he creates his own ring and taps into the same force that they do, but in his universe, you can use Alan Scott. It's that easy. It's that simple. But they don't do that. They 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 leave him as his own little thing and. Uh, they bring him around, and they never explain anything about him. I'm well, like, no, they, they had him fight um, Hal Jordan in the 50s and 60s. Well, I mean, he shows up sometimes. Right. But, like, they don't really bridge the gap to make it... Well, they did after the crisis, the original crisis. Okay. Like, they incorporated him into history. So, the Starheart was 
I forget exactly what they they said that was, but ultimately his um, the meteor that he fashioned the lantern and the ring out of um, were somehow from Oa, and so he was tapping into the same power and. And I keep calling it the Star Heart. Now I'm wondering if maybe the Star Heart wasn't something else. But either way, um, so eventually he he was. So Hal Jordan isn't the first one that fashioned a ring by himself. Hal Jordan fashioned a ring. Yeah, and the newest uh, rebirth, he fashioned it of his own will, <laughs> <laughs> and it's awesome. Yeah, it's so awesome. that, that, that's how you make stories, DC. Give him this awesome willpower such that when he his will is challenged and, and it's not up to snuff, you're like, what the heck, man? You, you made your own Green Lantern ring. How can you not overcome depression by your willpower, <laughs> Hal Jordan? <laughs> well, he's progressed since then. Anyways. I'm just saying. So, that, Alan Scott still is a uh, sore spot with DC. They don't ever use him. It's the same thing with I mean, the Justice Society. They could just bring the Justice Society from Earth too and have them cross over every now and then. Or That's they could what just, they used to do. They could make them their own thing in Earth too. Uh, they did it before Rebirth. He would, they were a little bit. Um, right. Wasn't that the Alan Scott that uh, would not have had his own biological children? I have no idea. Because he was. Um, of a different preference. Yeah. Yeah. You're making it a little more awkward than it needs to be. I'm sorry. Anyways. I'm, I'm being <laughs> silly. I, I think they made that one gay. That, that, that was, they I, did. I was trying they to be did. delicate about it without being they rude or anything. Um, Anyways, so that's that's uh, Alan Scott. Um, I like I liked the character. One of the first times I've seen him was uh, uh, actually in the comics was when he meets Kyle Rayner. Um, which was pretty sweet. Yes, that is a great, great issue. That's a um, great series. And the way DC did him when uh, when they sort of combined in Crisis was that Alan Scott served as like the prototypical Superman in yeah. the sense that he was Metropolis's defender before there was a Superman. So like uh, Ma Kent, uh, you know, had a crush on him hmm. when when he was I he in was his from heyday. Gotham. Oh, wait. Yeah. Okay. That's true. Right. All right. Anyways, anyways who's next on our list? Uh, <laughs> um, let's see. How do we segue? So, uh, we mentioned Captain Marvel. I could jump into that. That's true. All right. They, they were on the Justice Society <laughs> together. Let's, let's do that. So, Captain Marvel. And for those of you who don't know, we call... Shazam. Shazam Captain Marvel because that's his name. Shazam mm -hmm. is the wizard. He's Captain Marvel. Right. Um, but I we're okay with calling him Shazam. I understand um, why they call him Shazam, but it's DC's own fault for, that's right, for DC. losing that. I mean, you fell asleep at the wheel. You had a property you could have done something with. But they've learned from that mistake. <laughs> yeah, They've learned from that mistake. That's right. That's why they reinvigorated the, the, the name Damage. Because they had a character in the 90s called Damage, but mm -hmm. he's nothing like the new character, and they're like... Well, let's let's market the the title damage. Yeah, he says it's good. I hadn't read it. It's so. good. Anyways, um, so yeah. Oh, let's see. Where do we start? So he was created in the forties. Um, C. C. Beck and uh, Fawcett Comics, and um, they wrote some good stuff. Um. Then DC started putting pressure on them because he was more popular than Superman. Uh, if you want some proof of that, go watch Gomer Pyle. He used to say, Shazam, Shazam, Shazam. And then... Uh, Shazam. That's right. And then uh, Elvis fashioned some of his own capes after Captain Marvel because he was a huge fan. So, um, you know, Captain Marvel was crushing it in the popularity contest. Um, I'm not saying Superman's not popular because he is. Uh, but at the same time, when you see your number one guy is getting beat by a knockoff, yeah, well, he's not really a knockoff, right? Because he's, he's magically, he's he's. They Superman. have similar powers. He's Superman. No, he's, he's not. A, he's a knockoff on Superman, but it's a good one. He's a better version of Superman I agree. in the sense that he's a child, yeah, right. It, it, you know, who becomes a superhero, an adult superhero. And we're we're gonna argue that. 
Captain Marvel is better than Superman. In concept. All right. Yeah. Uh, Are we going to argue that now? Sure. All right. We're so Super, Captain Marvel, Shazam, is in concept the greatest comic book concept all time. Right. Execution, no. In concept, yes. Um, so you you have his powers being derived from this pantheon of mythology. Um, so the wisdom of Solomon, which... I gotta be honest. Just looking at the rest of the list as I name them, you'll be like, "Oh, those are Greek and uh, Roman uh, myths." I wonder why they have this biblical character. Um, and realistically, I wonder the same thing because there was uh, Solon, uh, who's mentioned in Thucydides' uh, histories, and you're like, "That dude was wise. Why didn't they go with him? He's one of the seven ancient sages." Um, so I don't know. I, I guess they wanted to uh, represent. Uh, you know, the, the Judeo-Christian uh, history of the country, you know, because um, there is some of that involved, uh, I guess. I don't know. A lot of the early guys were Jewish anyways. Oh, that's true. Uh, so maybe maybe it's just representing their Jewish history, uh, uh, heritage or whatever. So either way, I, I don't have a problem with it because you can incorporate, um, uh, you know, characters from uh, the Bible like Samson, who was super strong. Because Superman did that too. Like he yeah. fights Samson or Hercules or all these different things. So there, there's ways you can do it um, that incorporate these different mythologies. And so you have instant access to, to supernatural villains, um, to these different scenarios. Like we we're talking about with Hawkman and his Egyptology stuff. Like it's instant access to this storehouse of treasure that's not copywritten yeah. that you could do whatever you want to with. Well, I think um, also he uh, represents like the childhood dream to be yes. Superman. Yes. Because uh, Superman comes out, comes out a big hit, um, at least eventually. And then, right. you know, everybody's like, whoa, I, I want to be Superman. I want to be Superman. And then there's a comic book that's a little kid that becomes Superman, basically. Because yeah. Superman and is just like, adult. that's so cool. Like, yeah. you know, that's that's every every child's dream. And that's why I like, like Shazam a lot better than Superman because it kind of really fulfills that desire to, um, you know, oh, man, that would be me. That could be me. Like, right. If I went on the subway and met some really ancient wizard. Yeah. Um, well, in the reality of, of Robin's creation is just that. The DC recognized yeah. Batman wasn't quite selling like they wanted him to, and they needed something to hook the kids. And so you got this bright, shiny character named Robin, yeah. who's a kid. Yeah, I love Robin. Robin's <laughs> my favorite. So, But yeah, so... Um, but back to the mythology, you've got Hercules, Atlas, um, Zeus, Achilles, and Mercury. So he's got super speed, super strength, super endurance, um, mega power with Zeus there. Um, so he's like souped up to uh, God level, basically. Um, and yet he's this kid who's got to figure it out. So I think that really plays into what you're saying. Like it, it's not just like this, oh, I'm, I'm suddenly uh, perfect. I should be, yeah. but here's the flaw. I'm a kid, so I've got the wisdom of Solomon, this really smart guy, but it's conflicting with with who I am as a child. But as far as continuity goes. Yeah, oh yeah, so as far as continuity goes, um, they DC put him on the shelf. They tried to introduce a different version, Captain Thunder, um, <laughs> who, who is – it's the exact same character. They literally just changed his name, and therefore where his powers derived from, they gave him sort of this Indian background. And it was literally just a tryout issue to see how the character went over. And then they reintroduced the original Shazam, as was, um, and that went on for a few years. And then after Crisis – you know, they were trying to reintroduce all their big names, and so they did with this four-issue miniseries. Um, and then he, he was reintroduced also at the same time, simultaneously in the Legends miniseries by John Byrne. Um, and so they were trying to give him this nuance. And so they screwed up uh, his origin. They connected him more closely to Dr. Savania, uh, his main bad guy, and um, had Black Adam be the one who killed his parents who were like 
archaeologist or something. And um, and then a few years later, they gave it to Jerry Ordway, who did a phenomenal job with the Power of Shazam um, series. Um, but he undid some of what Roy Thomas had done in that miniseries, Shazam, A New Beginning. And um, so they had to explain that. And they're like, nah, we'll just ignore it. And that's pretty much what they did. They pretty much ignored it. Um, and uh, that. so when you do it like that, though, you then have to reintroduce these, these various characters. And you have to find a way to explain these other ones or just turn a blind eye to them. And um, DC often does try to explain it, so I commend them on that, because Marvel will just be like, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> but DC's done that too, um, and we'll talk about one character in a minute, uh, who they did that to. <laughs> but, so we say that uh, Captain Marvel is the greatest concept, concept of a superhero. And the best team <laughs> leads into concept. the concept. Is, is the Titans. Titans or the Teen um, Titans? Well, all, I just say Titans just because uh, it encapsulates the Teen Titans right. when it was the sidekicks all the way to uh, them being adults plus introducing oh. the other kids. And I think the reason is because um, it's more about the characters mm -hmm. and the relationships between the characters. Um, so when you when you watch the Justice League or uh, when you read the Justice League. The Justice League is awesome. They're co-workers, though. Right. They're um, guys who get together, and, and some of them are really close, and some of them are not. Right. And um, I think of Flash and uh, Green Lantern. Right. They're um, best friends. Um, Green Arrow, Green Lantern, best right. friends, those kinds of things. Batman, Superman. Yeah. yeah. Batman and Wonder Woman. You have the Trinity. You're right, Batman and Wonder Woman. But, but you know, the Justice League's... Always tends to lean more toward the what's going on in the crisis, whatever whatever's going on, because it's got to be big enough for the for the Justice League to need to to gather. The Legion of Doom is at it again. Um, uh, bad Justice League stories are really stories where you don't need the whole Justice League. Um, you're just like, why is everybody here? Like Superman could have done this by himself. Or Batman could have done this by himself. Unless you find a way to incapacitate. So there's an excellent um, issue where uh, the Justice League are basically um, pretending to be captured by Starro. And Batman sneaks in and saves the day by himself mm -hmm. pretty much. It's great. He'll read it and he'll be like, wow, that's really good. I think if you watch the Justice League cartoon, one of the things that helped it along is that they... Good shot. Uh, <laughs> is that they all uh, um, is a lot of the episodes at least in the first couple uh, mm -hmm. seasons are just a few of the characters right. it's not the whole team that's right it's like hey I need your help you come with me right and uh, there were te more team ups of the Justice League and then they would have these big episodes where everybody showed up right with the and so you're like okay well, that makes a lot more sense um, and if they did the Justice League that way it would make more sense even than the Justice League does now. Since he's on this subject, here's my pitch, DC. M make a Justice League Unlimited car comic book where instead of having a set team, you have this rotating cast. And you use whatever characters you want for whatever crisis you have at the moment. Right. Just like the cartoon show. That would be and beautiful. Give us beautiful art. Give us good stories. We'll buy it well, because that's what we want. Not the cartoon per se because the cartoon was great, but like I want to see Blue right. Beetle and, and the Justice League. Uh, well, and the great thing about that, you can use any character. Right. Any, any, yeah. And you can and, – and, and it doesn't even have to be long. Like you're like – Three oh, issues. Well, somebody – they don't like this character. It's all right. In two issues, it's going to be gone. Right. Or you know? one issue. You could do short stories yeah. I mean, because God forbid you guys have one and done issues anymore. But, I miss that. Yeah, that that would be really great series, really great series, and you know everybody would buy that. I think. Uh, hey, but um, and and that that does you could still do character development with characters that don't have their own series. Right. That's why that would be an awesome concept. And it would go a long way to introduce the the entire DC universe to people. Right. I didn't know about half of the DC characters until I watched the Justice League Unlimited. 
And I'm like, whoa, that's a cool character. So wow, thank that's you, a Bruce really Tim cool character. And all the folks that like, were on that you know, show. I was you know, meeting all these new characters. Like, I'd never heard of uh, um, oh, The Question. I love The Question in that series. Um, and I kind of fell in love with, uh, and, and I had known them before, but Green Arrow and Black Canary. Um, I had seen them great. before, but they did great in that. And then They did those characters justice. Supergirl, that was really great. Anyways, we're off subject. Which yeah, because we're talking about we the always So, I know that I tied all these things like with one one uh, thing, and we always end up talking about like a hundred different things. But I, it's hard to capture because we just sit here and we, we talk about all sorts of right. random mess. Anyways, um, Titans is the great Titans for Titans, Titans is great comics because it talk, focuses on the characters. Justice League focuses on the crisis. Uh, the Titans focus on the on the characters. They they don't uh, they're gonna come, uh, go and fight these crises even if they don't need everybody because they're a team. Right. Because they are friends. They ha they want to be around each other. They want to hang out. The Justice League they have their own sectors that they they uh, Gotham they the focus on Star City. Um, and uh, but and they come together for the big crises. The Titans hang out together, and they just stay together all the time. Right. Unless they uh, have school. Unless they have school, or they're training with their uh, mentors. mentors. Um, but once you get to Titans, they don't have mentors anymore. They just always hanging out with each other. Right. Um, so, and that's one of the great things because uh, they focus more on the relationship and how the relationship of the group is affected by the crisis, rather than because it didn't even need to be like that really big of a of a villain right um it could be like a really minor villain like but Dr. it has Light. huge effects of uh, uh huge effects in the group and uh you know you're focused more on what weird problems they're going it's a soap opera sometimes uh but it's good I mean, it's, it's really good comic books in general um it's really good uh which is why i don't care for the newest uh titans book is it didn't really get the character as well right uh but my problem waiting on them to fix that Hopefully they will. Yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure it'll work itself out. But as far as continuity goes, I think they did well until um, recently, really. Because like with the New Teen Titans, they kind of just explain it as like they're re uh, regrouping from the old Titan Teen Titans, mm. and then eventually, you know, they go into the Titans, and then uh, you have the Young Justice who starts coming in. Right. And uh, really, the only Major, uh, um, uh, what's the word I'm for? Um, continuity problems that you have are within the characters themselves and other things that affect the Titans, as far as I'm aware. Yeah. Until so you, before he, he, he drops that one and we go down that rabbit trail, um, I just think the fact that there are young characters who are living in the shadow of their mentors. They, they, you know, in that book, Titans, they, they have the ability to grow up, to enter into new relationships, um, to be out of the shadow of their mentors. Yeah. I think of Robin and his dating uh, Starfire. I think of Flash and and um, his decision to leave superhero or Kid Flash and his decision Wally, his decision. <laughs> To leave superhero and to go to college, um, I think of a Cyborg who had no mentor and how the Titans really became his family because... Um, he didn't have anybody else. He didn't he have anybody like else. like his dad. Right. And um, I think of Ra Raven who organized the, the Titans um, later, obviously, um, to, uh, to, to have the perfect team to... To, to battle Trigon, her dad. Um, so she has daddy issues. She has family issues. You know what I mean? They, they all have family issues, right? Uh, green, uh, red, uh, <laughs> Speedy, Arsenal, Roy Harper. Um, you know, he, <laughs> he was an orphan raised by Indians, and then uh, Green Arrow took him in as a teenager and trained him to be this incredible marksman. And... That worked until Green Arrow was more focused on superheroing than he was being a father figure. And uh, so Arsenal took to drugs, and that was a powerful story. 
Um, they could have been told in the Titans, but they, they didn't have a Titans comic book at the time. They had, they had canceled that. Um, and, and, and could have been something that w would have been um, groundbreaking as far as comic books directly aimed at children. Yeah. Um, whereas like Green Lantern and Green Arrow, the, the series that it actually was revealed in, had progressively moved toward um, more of an older um, demographic. I think I think what, what you're saying is with the Titans, they deal with real problems. Right. The Justice League doesn't. Like you don't see uh, see them wonder, worrying about well, some of most of them don't as a whole as a team they don't right. deal with the problem. When, when they do, it becomes really ham fisted. Like Whoa. just like why why are we bothering with you know this weird relationship? Yeah. You know, just get back to the fighting. But with the Titans, you're like, why are you worrying about the fighting? What about what's going on with these two characters? Like, right. you got to get them back together. Don't don't we care that Raven's <laughs> been manipulating Wally all along and right. she doesn't really love him? Yeah. <laughs> but I think one of the big problems with the Titans comes with uh, New 52. Um, <laughs> don't go there yet. There's one Titan in particular. Oh, we we'll need get to that address. first. I want to talk about continuity of okay. the Titans. Okay, okay. Right. Because they they re uh, and and some of that has to do with like Wally West and Wally West too, and uh, and that <laughs> I forgot about that. But like they de-age people randomly and uh, Beast Boy and Raven, right? Yeah, Beast Boy and Raven, like in uh, Rebirth, Beast Boy and Raven were like thirteen and fourteen. I was like, are you kidding me? Like they're in their twenties. I mean, on that. like Beast Boy finally got. You know something of a maturity to about right. him, and they're like, "Let's He's make him Teen the Titans young, go." <laughs> you know, he helps lead the Young Justice, and then they DH him enough to. Well, they do it before that because I think they DH him for uh, one of the uh, re ups of uh, Tim Drake's run of Titans. Mm, I don't know anything about that. We'll, we'll look it up. Yeah. But um, anyways, and, and they just start de aging people. And, uh, like, in the most recent Teen Titans, well, the, the previous Teen Titans from Rebirth, Starfire, Raven, and Beast Boy were all in it. I was like, why is Starfire in this? She's in her 20s. Right. She's not a teenager. And they say that. I'm like, why is she a Teen Titan? Like, she should be out with uh, Dick Grayson somewhere. Um, and then Beast Boy and Raven are not that much younger. Like, they might be the youngest of the of the. New Teen Titans. Well, I always thought Raven was older. But they're not that much younger. Um, and so, like, having them as young teenagers under... Uh, well, they had them a little bit older than Robin, which I like. I appreciated that. But, you know, these these characters have led the, the young Justice. Like, They led decades, their own versions of the Teen Titans. Decades ago. Yeah. Like, why are they now, like, submitting to, like, the youngest Robin that we've ever had? Um... <laughs> Doesn't make any sense to me. Doesn't make any sense to me. And uh, they finally, in this recent one, got Raven over to and Beast Boy over to Titans. Finally, back to that. And then, like with the Titans uh, uh, that came out with Rebirth, they had um, uh, some of the original cast. They added Lilith. Oh, um, she's from the original series. She's from the original series, not New the, Teen Titans before that. She shows up occasionally in New Teen Titans, but she's from the original, and then okay. in the 90s, uh, Dan Jurgens did a Teen right. Titans, and she was Omen. Well, I knew that they, they, she had been there before. Yeah, um, from the uh, 50s and 60s version. But I was like, what, what, where is Cyborg? Where is Beast Boy? Where is Starfire? Where is Raven? Why oh, you're are talking about the Titans hunt stuff? I was like, uh, that and then the Rebirth Titans. Yeah. I was like, why are these... Core Titans characters not around, or at least showing up, but instead half of them are in Teen. Unfortunately, Titans. because DC has decided that Cyborg is their token character for yeah. Justice League. That's dumb. He's he's a Titans character. He needs through and through needs to be a Titans character because that's his family, right? That's his family. Right. Um, I saw I was reading an issue of Red Hood. I think it was issue twenty five. At the very end, spoiler alert. Um, Arsenal shows up and saves um, um, Jason Todd. I was like, he's like, I got you, buddy. I was like, when have you two been buddies? Right. Like there was one series of Red Hood and the Outlaws 
but during New 52 where they were together for a few issues, and that was it. The only way that works is if they've somehow... Uh, I don't know what the opposite of de-aging would be. Re-aging? Jason Todd to be older because there's a at least yeah. a three to six year gap age wise because Dick and Roy are about the same age. Right. Um. Because and Jason's a number of years younger. Yeah, three to six. You know, would be my best guess. Yeah. It'd be be like you hanging out with your much older brother's best friend. Right. It's weird. Yeah. That's weird. Anyways, so that's the Teen Titans. You ready for, for this? Yeah, so... All right, so the biggest... With regard to the Teen Titans and their And in general, in general for Marvel, I mean for DC, probably one of the biggest. Donna Troy. The poor, poor girl. <laughs> I mean, Diana has her small issues. Right, that's true, that's but, true. But they're not as bad. Right. They're not as bad. Um... So, I don't even know where to start with uh, Wonder Girl, Donna Troy. Um, I mean, originally she was like a playmate given life. Yeah. Um, so that Diana would have someone to be friends with when she was growing up. But she was perpetually kept in uh, child form or something like that. Um, and then, uh, let's see. Or something, I don't know. Um <laughs> I, I can't find what what he was asking me about as far as um, I'll look it up. Yeah, later. Peace boy. So that's not that big. Let a me uh, just real quick uh, see how Wonder Girl started, um, because that's the thing. Like Donna Troy, um, is is she's got so many origin stories. It's sad you can't remember all of them. Um, I can't got, remember all. There of are them. so many. Uh, comic books titled Who is Donna Troy? That's right. It's not funny. There's two <laughs> within like a few years of each other. Yeah. Because DC screwed up her character so much. If you want a really good one, it's in the New Teen Titans. It's one of the first ones. Uh, it's really excellent. It's yes. all about Dick Grayson trying to find out who, where Donna Troy came from. And in that one... Um, you basically find out that she's an orphan that ended up on, uh, when I say Themyscira. Yeah. Ugh. She was saved out of a burning building. So. We've said so many uh, different names. That's Yeah, Themyscira is right. That's Themyscira. Right. Right. Like, okay. um, anyway. She, she was even uh, eventually given powers like the Amazon. Um, and recently she was found out to be a, uh, a god killer trying to someone trying well I don't know if god killer is the right word but she was meant to destroy D uh, Diana which doesn't she's a weapon made to destroy Diana which doesn't yeah. make any sense and uh, they don't know what to do with the character <laughs> they don't know I, I think the easiest way just make her an orphan that showed up on Themyscira and then raised just, right. raised by the Amazons right and if, and if Boom, you wanted done. to come back from the future you know, have her somehow shunt into the future and come back, and I think that's fine. There was a, uh, an, uh, there was a few issues that were okay, where she comes back from the future and all of her uh, best friends had died, and she's grief strucken Right. And they all had to fight her future self, and I thought that was good. Yeah. But at the same time, like, and you're just like, oh well, you know, you can always just change the future. It's not that hard. But um, yeah, they need to just. Stick with something. They keep reamping the character, and in the current iteration of the Titans, she's not even like Donna. No, no. Uh, Donna Troy is the. Uh, she's the heart and soul of the Titans. Thank you. I, I wasn't sure if we wanted to say heart yeah. and soul or. Yeah, she's but no, heart. she's the heart and soul of the Titans. That's exactly just like what Wonder Woman is the heart of the Justice League. Right. She's the glue that holds the Trinity together. Right. Donna Troy is the. Kind of the motherly figure of the Titans. And very, very central. To everybody, the, every, to she uh, cares for everybody in need. And, um, you know, she's also probably the most powerful of them, strength-wise. And yeah, right. And uh, you know, so, uh, but you know, she's really close to all of them. Right. And uh, and then the newest iteration, she just seems so like distant. Um, and angry. I'm just like, that's not Donna Troy. Like, she might get angry, but she's not like, she's very, uh, she wears her emotions on her sleeves. She does, yeah. Not as, not like, not like, uh, 
She's not cold and heartless. Right. She's very cold and heartless in this. And I yeah. was like, that's not Donna Troy. I like yeah, that was shocking when I was reading that, the couple issues you had been in. Yeah. Um, and they kind of made her a little more uh, tomboyish and the rebirth Titans. <laughs> I remember you saying something about her, her hopping on a motorcycle and saying that, that, was awful. that Dick, Dick doesn't get all the fun. Well, that's even worse. Stuff. That's even worse. She was a little more tomboyish and, and the other. And I was like, well, she's always been, you know. She's a tough girl, but she's, she's a tough very girl, feminine. but she's very feminine. And I'm like, right. she's not a tomboy. So there's a difference. Like, you can be a tough girl without being a tomboy. Right. Um, you can be a strong woman without being tomboyish. Right. And uh, they were they were crossing that line to, into tomboyish, and uh, and that's fine for for children. That's fine. But this is a well, and, and young it's, adult. And it's fun for for some characters to be tomboyish, um, but don't take a, a strong woman and make her tomboyish. Like just for the just don't don't change the character right. at their core for the sake of. Um, appeasing a particular yeah. demographic or something. I, I think that they were just trying to make her more seem more uh, I don't know. I don't know. Anyway, they wanted to keep back to her origin real quick. They wanted to keep her um, connected tangentially to, to the different uh, myths and so once, once Wonder Woman came out um, after Crisis, they had to redo Donna's origin, so she was um, taken by the Titans of Myth and uh, prepared to be one of like twelve children who were going to save the universe. Um, but that never went anywhere. Um, and then uh, let's see. Uh, at some point, she became a magical duplicate, which I thought was okay. Um, <clears throat> Basically, uh, this entity called Dark Angel cursed Donna to live endless lives, um, uh, dealing uh, characterized by suffering. So she's uh, just over and over again being um, subjected to these 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 terrible things. Like she had her um, son killed uh, by villains or whatever. Um, she eventually lost her memory. And so Wally West had to provide the memories to um, to help her remember who she was, and she worried that she wasn't um, herself, but rather yeah, Wally's her idolized her. version of her. And when I say I idealized, not idolized, like she's an idol, but it like <laughs> of course he knows her, so he's only remembering the best things about her is what she was worried about, mm. and. Um, and she and uh, Arsenal had had uh, something of a, of a relationship in the original series, but they sort of consummated that in the um, Titans thing. And she started to worry the only reason they were having that relationship was because she was worried she was too much of the good girl. And so she was trying to act out of sorts. Um, but the thing is, I love that relationship. As much as I love Batman and Wonder Woman, I love Arsenal and Wonder Girl. And I... I was really excited that they were together, but then of course that went the way of all flesh, as the saying goes. Yeah. So they kind of brought it back in rebirth. Yeah, but so, who knows what it is now? Because. Right. So they, you know, they they killed her off again after all that, um, which led to uh, the Beast Boy, Raven, Cyborg, Starfire mentoring the Young Justice characters. And that was all before Infinite Crisis and that sort of stuff. And so they just they keep screwing her around, man. And um, and so now she's like, there's a whole on her Wikipedia page. There's a whole series about origin retcons. Um, and it makes me sad <laughs> because she's an interesting character who has um, a lot of potential. Anyway, so. Yeah, just a just a great character, and I hate that they've done so much to her. Yeah, I've just been reading through the Nineteen Titans, and because uh, they've got the volumes coming out, and you know, just an amazing character. Uh, I hate that they've done that to her. So it is what it is. Yes. Yeah. Who else we got on there? Um, can't make them all. 
Uh, let's see. Uh, we've got the issue of The Killing Joke. Oh. Um, I say it's in continuity, and I say Batman did not kill Joker. He says it's outside of continuity, and or it's meant to be the last Batman Joker That's meant to story. Be the last. That's meant and, to be the last. Um, he kills the Joker. No, he says he kills the Joker. I should have brought he, that book. We don't need the book. We know how it ends. He, e everybody watching has... He's seen. laughing, and then, and then suddenly the laughter stops. he stops. Right. That doesn't he mean stops. he choked him out or broke his neck. And he broke his neck. No, there's no indication in the yeah. story that he broke his neck. You would hear there'd be a snap noise. Or something. Why did the la laughing stop? Because the laughter always stops. Oh, uh, brother. The Joker doesn't stop laughing. Yes, he does. He has to. Only when he starts talking. They're both laughing, and then suddenly the laughing stops. They killed him. He killed him. It's meant to be the last bat, the Joker story, last Joker story. Right. So here, here's the thing. He wants his cake, Oracle, Barbara Gordon, and eat it too. The last Joker story. Yeah, that's the problem. Yeah, because they, because they did go off of that with Oracle being Oracle. And I'm perfectly content to have it be in continuity and not the last Joker story. Unless, DC, you're going to tell us there's three but, Jokers because the original one has long been dead and these are all fakes. But let's make this, because I think we can both <laughs> agree on this. Let's make the killing joke a case study for the Joker in that he's very funny. Yes. But... Like super dark at the same time. Yes. Because I've had some discussions on YouTube with uh, some guys on uh, on a bet top ten Joker uh, actors, and I was like, number one, Mark Hamill. Mark Hamill. There's no question. Uh, He's I'm, creepy as all get out, but hilarious. And but I, I I complain about Heath Ledger, his Joker, because he's not funny. Right. There's like a couple times where you're like, oh, that's funny. Sure. But every other time, it's just like, this guy's super creepy. Mm -hmm. And the Joker can be dark. I think he, he needs to be both light and dark. Right. Um, Batman always stays dark. Right. Joker. Because Batman is the gray. The Joker goes Joker's back and forth. Black and white. He's not in the middle. He usually goes back and forth. Right. Um, and, uh, but he's got to be funny. Like, if he's not funny, he's not the Joker. Because he's the Joker. Like if he's not telling jokes constantly, he's not he's not a Joker. And he needs and, to be funny. And the thing is, they don't have to be jokes that are funny to us, but the way that as long he as they're thinks funny they're him. funny. Right. He has to think they're funny because because the, the thing is when I tell jokes, people don't usually laugh. Yeah, it's when I here. laugh at my <laughs> jokes that people laugh with me. But uh, they're laughing at me, I understand, but So that <laughs> You know, uh, he needs to be cracking himself up, and uh, he doesn't do that in Heath Ledger's Joker, and that's why I don't like the character. Uh, the movie's great. Um, I enjoy Very it. intense. I enjoy it. Heath Ledger's acting in that. It was really good character, really good acting. I just don't think it was good Joker. That's yeah. that's how I put that. But uh, but if in the Killing Joke you see a super dark Joker where he kills. I mean, he shoots uh, Barbara Gordon in the stomach. Tortures, tortures or her. Gordon. Uh, uh, takes Commissioner pictures Gordon. of her uh, without clothes on and then tortures Gordon with them yeah. while she's bleeding out and dying. And then Batman has to come and save while going through this, like, craziness. All because, in Joker's mind, he believes that one event can cause you to completely, like, if it's bad enough... It'll cause you to completely turn away from everything you've ever right. believed. And Batman can't kill Joker unless he does the very thing the Joker's saying that people will do. Yeah. So that's why it's such an interesting argument. All right. Did he or did he not kill that's him? That's right. So let's not. Do you think he killed him? Do you not think he killed him? Or are you interested? Love to have that conversation. Because Gordon doesn't turn. Right. But the argument Not is that Batman Barbara. does. Huh? Right. Not that is Barbara. Well, she's bleeding and being right. helped. So. Well, and that's why it's called The Killing Joke, because he yes. kills him in the end. Uh, I've always thought it was a killing joke, because if you remember the joke correctly, there's no way the guy that was telling the joke didn't die. Right. You can't walk out on the, the flashlight light. Right. And if you try, you'll die. 
<laughs> the Joker told the joke. He and he dies. It's such a great joke. It's, it, anyways, I wish I could remember exactly great, what the Great issue. They have it in the hardback. You should go get it. Yeah. Um. But uh, yeah, I I think that the Joker dies there, yeah. and uh, it doesn't gonna, work for continuity. But you know, yeah. whatever. So I'm gonna tell one uh, lightning round uh, piece of uh, continuity issue that I have with DC. So I love the the Giffen De Matias Justice League run, and I enjoy the character of Max Lord. But it angered me greatly when he decided to, like, they decided he was going to be human and kill Blue Beetle. Okay. So I was, I read that entire series from 1 to 113. And toward the end of that series, Jared Jones, um, uh, the writer at the time, uh, was turning Max Lord into Lord Havoc, um, uh, which was a character that had long been plaguing um, the Justice League uh, from the De Matias run all the way through. And uh, I was interested in that. I wanted to see the conclusion of that. And then they just reintroduce him right before uh, Infinite Crisis as perfectly human, nothing to do with the Lord Havoc stuff. And the guy who was running DC at the time was like, yeah, we didn't care about that, so we're not even going to address it. And that junk just made me mad. Um, never mind that he killed... Uh, Blue Beetle, who, you know, for so long, uh, he was working with the Justice League. Now, he was not the best guy, but he was not a murderer either. Um, and so, DC, please care about continuity enough to do us a favor and stop rebooting. <laughs> um, That's where half their problems come in. No, 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 no. All of their problems come in because they keep rebooting. Um, so just because we appreciated what you tried to do with Crisis, the original one, uh, we don't appreciate what you tried to do with Zero Hour. We don't appreciate what you tried to do with Infinite Crisis, Final Crisis, your mama's crisis, your daddy's crisis, your cousin's crisis, his best friend twice removed from his sister's crisis. We don't care about that. Just just stop. Give us good stories. Um, that I don't mind crises. I just wish that the main crises. purpose... I just wish... They didn't do them just because they needed to fix all the mistakes that they had made. Yeah, and uh, quit quit acting like we need a crisis every five minutes. Um, Although Marvel's different. worse than DC is with that. That's true. That's true because then they drag everybody in unless they want to leave like the X-Men out. And you're like, man, they're outside the X-Men's front door <laughs> having this fight. Why are the X-Men not coming out and helping? If we were going to list all of Marvel's... Uh, Continuity problems. <laughs> we would be here much longer. But here's the problem. Because another one, and we won't get into this. Is DC, DC cares about continuity. Is uh, is Batman family? <laughs> the Bat family is just all over the place. Yeah. Especially because with Rebirth, I mean, with uh, New Fifty Two and Rebirth, they try to de-age everybody. Right. Because I mean, Batman would be uh, eighty years old almost now. Which so, makes sense in reality, <laughs> but not in comics. <laughs> Because I think he's supposed to have been active, what, 10 or 15 years? Yeah. And he's had three to five different Robins in that time. Can't you keep them, Batman? Or are they dying? Anyways. I'm looking at you, Jason Todd. You're supposed to be dead. And then, like, with the Titans, like, they're all in their 20s, but they were created, like, <laughs> at least 30, 40 years ago. For some of them, it was 80 years ago. Right. <laughs> so. so Dick should be 80 years old, too. Right. Because he was, what, 41? Yeah. Batman was 39, I think. Uh, that sounds right, yeah. So. No, no, no. Dick was 40. 40? Yeah. I know it was either 40 or 41. Yeah. Uh, but, yeah. We should have had, like, five Batmans by now. Instead of the three we got. Uh, we had a lot more than three, then. It's a joke, guys. <laughs> <laughs> I'm referencing Bruce. <laughs> Azrael. Anyways, Dick. are there any continuity problems in DC we didn't mention uh, that you uh, want us of? to talk of? Because we'll uh, do it. If you made it this far in the video, congratulations. Uh, Let us know down below. Thanks for uh, watching all the way. Um, let us know what you think. Um, are, are there any uh, uh, superhero chats you'd like to hear from me and Lewis? Uh, we'd love. We've got to. a few other ideas in the well, tank. You know, that. we can't do this or come up with ideas infinitely. So we'd love to hear. 
you i know some people have told me like they want to do more marvel uh, but then they won't tell me what they want to hear from right marvel. so we, we'll get on that i mean we did do the x-men stuff um we're we dc guys fantastic but... right i love some marvel stuff too but we like marvel we love yeah. to talk about it so you know um anyways let us know what you like to hear us talk about and we love talking about comic books so that's, right. that's not gonna be any, any problem at all we've spent two hours today just doing that <laughs> uh so. and, th and this is just like a glimpse into what our week is usually like we don't right. sit down and talk about this uh, every day but you know. that's right we use text and <laughs> facebook <laughs> And every time we, we see each other, in every public, time we see each other, it's always yeah. like his family is like, we need to go. And yeah, they're sitting I'm in like, the car waiting I'm for like, me. Sorry, we're uh, <laughs> we're in this conversation. Maybe next time I won't keep them so long. <laughs> Anyways, hope you have. Course, a, hope the, you enjoyed that. Our friendship wouldn't have worked twenty years ago when I didn't have family. <laughs> but, uh, we would have just never stopped talking. That's right. We did. We'd still be there. So. <laughs> Thanks for watching. We'll catch you next time. Peace.